Then the next thing we're going to do is code our color button, and we're going to use the same method if we were to change the font, which I'm going to show you both here in this video. Remember, we're going to use store, swap, and return. So it's going to store our current background color, give us the option to swap it in a separate dialog box, and then return our new color that we chose. So the first thing I have to do before I click on the button is give myself the color dialog option. And that is in back in the toolbox. We go over here to dialogs, and it gives me the color dialog option. So I'm going to drag it over, but notice what happens. When I drag it over, it goes down here into its own little area. What that means is it's a background part of the program that is included, but is not physically visible without us telling it to be, which is what we're going to do with this button. And we're going to go ahead and keep with our camel casing naming scheme and rename it color dialog. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go over, double click on the color button. Notice how this time when I had the button name correctly, it appears here beside private sub. So we're going to do our first step, which is to store. So we're going to take the current color, color dialog dot, and we're going to get its current color equals. Now, what we are doing is we are setting the current highlighted color to be equal to what the current color is. As we'll get into in programming, unlike where you have A plus B equals C, coding always reads that C would equal A plus B. We'll talk more about that later. And it's going to equal me dot back color. And what that means is it's looking not for a specific color right now. It's just looking to see what the current back color is. So this was our first step, which is to store. Color dialog dot color equal me dot back color. Next, we're going to give the user the option to change the color. So color dialog, color dialog dot, we're going to show the dialog. And we're just going to have a blank set of parentheses because we don't know what the user is going to choose. We're just giving them the option. And then it's going to return it. So to return it, we're just going to reverse our store line. So it'd be me dot back color is now equal to the color dialog dot color. So we're just flip flopping our options. So let's go into the program and run it. Hold that thought. It's one of the disadvantages to recording here at the school, but that's okay. So here's our program running, and we're going to go ahead and click on the color dialog. So right now it's returned the pink color. I'm going to change the background eh, to green. And it's now successfully changed our background to green color. If I click on again, this is the store method where it stores the color it's on. I'll change it to blue. That's our swap, and it returns the blue color. That is working with the color dialog box. Now, font is going to work the exact same way. Go ahead and close these real quick. We're going to bring over the font dialog. And I'm going to go ahead and change the name, font dialog. And I'm going to actually go ahead as a quick review and set up another button that allow me to change that. So we'll do this button. We're going to name it font button and change its text to font. And I'm going to find a label. And I'm going to name it, or put the text in, how to change the font. And name it font label. 
as I said before, it is going to be the exact same process, only instead of the word color, we're going to use font. So, font dialog, remember, that is what we named it, dot font equals me dot font. We're going to give our user the show dialog for the swap, the option to swap, and then return the new font to our program. Now, notice again, I had the little air blue line come up. What did I forget? Forgot to type the word font. Very good. Okay. And if I run the program, it's going to give me the option to change the font here. And I have all the options you're used to in Word. And we're going to I think it should change the font of the entire program. So let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, it ended up changing the whole font of the program, the buttons, the labels, everything. We can get to limiting that later, but we're not going to get to that right now. We're just going to keep it real simple. We stored, we swapped, and we returned for both colors and font.